let's talk about question 11, which is all about up-amp analysis and deriving V out in terms of V in. So let's look at the first part of the question. In the following circuit, find V out in terms of V in and or R. The N or term sounds a bit sus here, but we'll see why. So first of all, we want to see whether the op-amp has a negative feedback, because if it does, then it makes a lot of things easier. So let's try. Let's first say that there is a current across R going from the right to the left, and I'll call it I of R. So this will give me the equation that V out minus V minus is equal to I R times R. But now the question is, what is the, what is the quantity of IR actually? And that's something we want to know because for any op amp, there shouldn't be any current flowing into the terminal, yet IR is a current that flowing in, that's flowing into the terminal. So since this current IR shouldn't exist at all, there should be no current flowing through the resistor R at all, and therefore IR is actually non-existent, which means it's equal to zero amps, and thus these two equations together bring us the conclusion that Vl is equal to V minus. So if I increase V out, I end up increasing V minus as well because they are equal values. If I increase V minus, then I decrease the value of V plus minus V minus. And if I decrease this value, it's also equivalent to having decreased the op amp gain times that difference between V plus and V minus, which means I'm also decreasing the output since the output is defined as the gain times the V plus minus V minus. And therefore, by increasing the V out, I have decreased the V out, which means I have a negative feedback in the circuit. And since we have proved negative feedback, which I'm going to abbreviate as negative FB since FB is not a company at all for now, I guess, I am going to have acquired the knowledge from the golden rule that V plus is equal to V minus in this op amp, which is equal to V out, because V minus is equal to V out, but V plus at the same time is also equal to V in. So in other words, I find that the troll answer is V out is equal to V in in this, in this, question, in this question. So there we have solved part of the question. And now let's move on to part B, which let's us look at a slightly more complicated circuit. So in this circuit, we want to find an expression of node V out in terms of the node voltages V in and V one and other circuit components as well as the circuit quant element quantities that we know, maybe R two, maybe R three. Let's also mark that there was a hint in the question, which we'll generously use later. So first of all, I would like to know whether the circuit has a negative feedback. So let's say that the current across R2 is IR2, which flows from the right to the left. So I will be able to say that V out minus IR2 times R2 is equal to U minus plus V1. Because this node, I use a different color for this, this node is equal to, is having the node voltage of U minus plus V1. So knowing that, I could have also subtracted both sides of the equation by V1, so V out minus R2 times R2 plus V1 is equal to U minus. Okay, and I'm going to do the entire negative feedback proof here from before, which is that by increasing V out, it's actually that I have decreased U minus, which is V minus in the previous case. And in any ways, it's the nodal voltage at the op amp's negative terminal. But in here, the question quoted it as U minus, so we'll just use the notation of U minus to avoid confusion. So by decreasing U minus, we have increased the we have We have decreased the value, sorry, I have, oh sorry. Uh, so by increasing V out, I have increased the value of U minus. Maybe that made more sense. And that's because by increasing one side of the equation, I must increase the other side of the equation. So in this case, R2 times R2 plus V1 is a constant value. And to maintain the equation while I, uh, by, while I increase the value of V out, to maintain this equation such that both sides of the equation are equal to each other, I must also increase U minus. So now I know, so now I have acquired that, I know that by increasing U minus, 
why I have decreased the value of u plus minus u minus because now I'm just subtracting u plus by a larger number. And in turn, I have been decreasing the opt gain times u plus minus u minus, which happens to be equal to the definition of output. So in this case, by increasing v out, I have decreasing v out, therefore I have negative feedback. And by having negative feedback, I now have more knowledge about this circuit, which is first of all, b plus is equal to, oh, sorry, u plus is equal to u minus. We're using u plus and u minus notations now. And I know that u plus is equal to v in, so must u minus b. And second of all, regardless of the feedback loop structure, the currents that flow into the circuit are always, uh, the flow, the, the currents that flow into the terminals of the op amp circuit must also always be zero amps. So here I have, that means here I have another current that is equal to IR3. Flowing from the up to the down. And I know that IR2 must be equal to IR3 using the Kirchhoff current law. So what this could tell me is that since KCL is telling me IR2 is equal to IR3. I can also write IR2 and IR3 in terms of known circuit quantities. So for example, IR2 will be equal to V out minus the node here over R2. So that would be V out minus U minus plus V1 over R2 which will then be set equal to IR3, and IR3 is simply U minus minus the ground node over R3 using Ohm's law. So I'll just write it as U minus over R3. And so now I can expand this equation further, and knowing that I need to find an expression for V out, I can just isolate the entire, uh, I can just isolate the V out term at the other side later. But for now, let me just expand the equation plainly without too many algebraic actions. So now that we have expanded the equation completely, I can isolate the VL term on one side of the equation. And I get the other side of the equation to be something like this. Okay, so now what I need to do is just to multiply both sides of the equation by R2. So that means I have u minus times 1 plus r2 over r3 plus v1. And don't forget that u minus is actually equal to v in due to the golden rule. So I can just replace the value of u in with u minus with v in. And so we get that v out is equal to v in times 1 plus r2 over r3 plus v1. And these values are all usable because the question told us we can use V and V1 and some other circuit quantities, which in this case are R2 and R3. So therefore, by finding an algebraic expression for V out in terms of the variables the question gave us, we have solved the question part B. And thus we have solved the entire question.